Um, it, it had been vacant, it had been boarded up. Uh, I know that the owner at that time, not the current owner, but previous owners uh, wanted to talk about mothballing it. I mean, it came so close to coming down. I mean, it was just a miracle that this thing is still standing up. Uh, look at the detail on the porch. So this, I guess you could almost say, was a transitional house too. It's got elements of Italianate and Queen Anne coming in. Does that sound like I, do, do I sound like I, I know what I'm talking about, Nelson? Good, thank you, thank you very much. Anyway, um, so the Curtinius house. This is on Wheaton Avenue. This is the address, I know Sharon would have this down, 747. This was built in 1883. It was built by Benjamin Rowe, who was a brick mason. And uh, this is Queen Anne. But it's interesting because uh, so many times with the brick houses at this time, they've got the, the detail over the window, whether it be the detail, the lintels at the bottom, the ornament um, on the top. I love the detail on this one up in the gable area. Um, and what paint, again, has done to bring that detail out. Remember, texture. How do we bring texture? Well, you know, through these decorations. And here's another detail. This is the front gable. It's amazing what digital cameras can do. I'm amazed, anyway. Even my little digital camera. Anyway, this is another home that Sharon featured last week. This is 711 Wheaton. This is 1887. This is also Queen Anne. Um, I love... I don't know, Sharon. I mean, have you? I, it, the decorative. The, she was wondering about the corner window yeah. on there. No, I think that was just. No, I think Linda. That's the way it was designed. Yeah, if you look at um, right where Kelmsley Avenue blends into Douglas, there's another house like that that has almost that same configuration. Mm -hmm. So Queen Anne. This has got again, the the different types of shingles that give it some texture. Uh, this has got a high pitched gabled roof. A very, you know, a small sort of modest po uh, post, but again, uh, Queen Anne, Queen Anne. Here's another Queen Anne that I found uh, in the Vine neighborhood. Maybe, Princess, Prince okay, Princess Anne. I don't want to confuse it too much. <laughs> because there are, the thing I was going to say is, depending on what books you consult, depending on what architecture books you consult, um, it seemed like a number of years ago, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, there was a lot more emphasis on some of the homes built like in the last half of the 19th century and then into the 20th century. And there was a term that I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Old House Journal came out with about, I don't know if they were the ones that came out with Princess Anne or what, there was, I don't know, but sort of like a smaller version of a Queen Anne that maybe was built, maybe not exactly 1900, maybe a little after 1900, maybe like 1895 to maybe 1905. So a more subdued Queen Anne. Um, so you can see the tower, you can see the detail on the gable roof. Um, so again, like I said, you could go nuts with all the different terms that are out there, all the different parts of it. Now this is the one home that I started off with when in my introduction. This is 532 Village Street, I got that right, 1895. Now, Sharon, the people who own this house say that it is a mail order catalog home. It's, it's not a pre-cut, but it is a barber house. Mm -hmm. It's a barber, uh, barber plan house. From Tennessee. Yeah. So. Yeah. A very humble version of it. But look at that. Look at the detail on this one. It's got a clipped gable, clipped gable roof. So it's it almost clipped in the sense that it almost looks like it's been cut off up at that top area. Look at the fish scale shingles on this. The high pitched roof of this, the detail on this home is just incredible. Like when you walk around, I had no trouble taking the front and the side, the two sides. I would have loved to have taken the back. They have an absolute spectacular garden in the back, but I didn't feel like wanting to walk back there. You know, I just. What's the date of that? 1895. 1895. This is one side of the home. Here's another side of the home. So this is Queen Anne. It's got a little dormer way off on the other side, but just an absolute lovely home to, to look at. So this is Queen Anne. Here's another Queen Anne. This is on Walnut Street. This is a home that Vine Ventures fixed up many, many, many years ago when Vine Ventures was around. Anyway, so again, you can see the uh, detailing up in the gable. I don't know if this is as much Queen Anne or if this is sort of a transition into colonial. This is transitioning into colonial because of that window up in the gable. Mm -hmm. And the columns. Yeah, and the columns. 
Now this is the one home on Wheaton Street that got the award from Jennifer Granholm. Uh, I don't know how many years ago it was. I want to say 2004. Yeah, I think so. um, it got a statewide award for preservation. And Sharon referred to the developers in the neighborhood that would build homes very similar to one another. Um, this is, an, again, a very small, you know, very small, modest Queen Anne home, part of what I refer to as the triplets. Um, there are tr uh, triplets on the block. So you can see the home that I just showed you is the one in the middle. And then there's the one to the right and one to the left. Now, if you flip it the other way, there's three more on minor to back up to this. Okay. Built by the same developer, did you ever find out? Very much the same style, very, very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So entirely possible that that could have been it. Okay, this is the one on Merrill Street. I want to thank them for putting Merrill Street on the house. But look at that porch. Absolutely wonderful porch. Um, do you have a date for this one, Sharon, at all? Yeah, see, I was going to say that because the, the columns are not so much Queen Anne, but we're sort of transitioning more into colonial. So it's got that detail of the Queen Anne. It's got that uh, fish scale up in the gable. It's also got that really cool little window to the left of it called the eyebrow dormer. Uh, we have a few of them in Kalamazoo, not all that many, but we do have a few eyebrow dormers. Um, so this is, this is Queen Anne. I must say that the green of the house sort of my camera sort of made the green of the house go crazy with the green trees and everything. Um, the dog underneath it was looking at me sort of wearingly. The, the dog's area was in the skirting underneath the porch. But anyway, um, I think there were a few dogs that were disappointed that I wasn't taking pictures of them in the houses. Or at least that's what I interpreted their stares at me, you know. But anyway, so Queen Anne. Um, this is 828 South Rose Street. This is also Queen Anne. This is 1890. But the porch, that is a different porch from the original porch. They do have a photograph of the home after it was first built. And it was built in 1890. And this, is, this was interesting because, again, it's brick. You've got that detailing up in the gable. And uh, in 1957, it was the Evangelical Lutheran Latvian Church. Not only the church, but the school and the parsonage were located in this, in this building. Um, it's a wonderful story of how this house was brought back to life um, I've, I, had, I begged Pam O'Connor to let me write two pages on it in Kalamazoo Lost and Found because it's such a wonderful story about how the family took the house over in 1994 after it had been vacant for 10 years and really brought it back and just did an absolute marvelous job, but it's, it's Queen Anne. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I saw Julie come in. I don't know if Julie's still here or not, but um, this is the Austin House on Rose Place. I'm not going to go into the history of Rose Place because they're going to talk about that in a couple weeks. But if anything, here is another Queen Anne. Uh, this one was built in 1888, the Culver Austin home. Um, also of brick, but you can see a lot of those same elements we talked about in Queen Anne. Okay, now Sharon, you brought this up last week. This is the home that's on the corner of Westnage and Axtell. And I don't think you showed this picture. This, this picture comes from the 1890 picturesque Kalamazoo. And you can see, again, very traditional Queen Anne home on the corner of Axtell and West. It faced West Street. Now, this is the photo that Sharon showed. This is from picturesque Kalamazoo 1909. You can see in 19 years how that porch was added. Here, here it is in 1890, and here it is in 1909. And here it is today. Now, Sharon's theory, and it is very interesting, it is a very interesting theory, is when you look, and she mentioned this last week, if you look at the home to the south, it's this, OK? And she wondered whether or not, because if you see what that tower is positioned on, which is basically two by fours, right? One big four by four. She wonders, is that it? 